Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're drawing exponential graphs. The standard equation is y is equal to a times b to the power of x plus q. Now, like you had done in the hyperbola, q is an asymptote. Here, q is also an asymptote. Okay? But now the graph gets a bit challenging. What is a good habit to do is always make b a positive exponent. Now why would I say that? May be a positive exponent, right? Let's take 2 to the power of minus x. From your exponential laws, you know that this is the same as saying 2 to the power minus 1 to the power of x, which gives you a half to the power of x. Now, why would this be relevant in an exponential graph? An exponential graph has a few issues. Number one, it has its asymptote. Now, the graph could be on the top of the asymptote or the graph could be at the bottom of the asymptote. Now, to decide if it's on the top of the asymptote or to decide if it's at the bottom of the asymptote revolves around the A. If you are a positive A, then you will be on the top of the asymptote. Whether it's right or left, you will still be on the top of the asymptote. But if you are negative a, then you would be on the bottom of the asymptote. Whether it's right hand side or left hand side, you would be on the negative means you would be at the bottom of the asymptote. So positive a's are on the top of the asymptote, negative a's are at the bottom of the asymptote. That affects our A here. But now B becomes an issue also. Right. If you keep on making B a positive exponent, this rule that I'm going to now apply can only work when the exponent power is a positive. So if I have a negative X, you can't apply this rule. That's why it's advisable to follow your exponent rules and make it a positive X. Now what is the rule? The rule is, if B, I'm talking of this one, lies between 0 and 1. So what you would call most of the time a fraction, okay? But now I'm not talking of an improper fraction or a mixed fraction. Only standard fractions. So that would lie always on your left hand side. But when B is greater than 1, then I would lie on your right hand side. So the exponential graph will lie on your right hand side. Now remember greater than 1 could also mean a fraction but it would be an improper or a mixed fraction. So when you are neat, nice, tidy little fraction then you know I'm on the left hand side. But when you are greater than 1 like a whole number or a mixed fraction or improper okay so that sounds like a whole lot of gibberish but when we put it together you'd actually understand this is what the graph is actually saying. If I'm a positive A and my B is greater than 1, I'm here. If I'm a positive A but my B is between 0 and 1, then I'm there. If I'm a negative A but my B is between 0 and 1, then I'm on that one. And if I'm negative A but I'm greater than 1. Keeping in mind all the time that this is actually your asymptote. It is not your Cartesian plane. Let's say I am doing a graph that is 2 to the power of x. Now 2 to the power of x, you would notice that my b is greater than 1 and the sign in front is a positive. So this is greater than 1 and the sign is positive. So that would mean I'm starting on the top and I'm going through like that. But what I'm in this standard one I'm taking this as my asymptote okay. So look the whole number I started on my right hand side which means that you were furthest away from your asymptote on your right hand side. If I had negative 2 to the power of x now I'm still a whole number, but I'm negative. Now the whole number still means that I start on my right hand side. 
I'm furthest away from my asymptote on my right hand side. But negative means I'm at the bottom of the asymptote. So I'm going like this. So again, you are furthest away from your asymptote on the right hand side. Now let's take a half to the power of x. When I'm a fraction, it means that I am starting on the left hand side. That's what this says. But because I'm positive, I am on the top of the asymptote. So I'm starting on the left. So I'm furthest from the asymptote on my left hand side. And I'm above the asymptote. Can you see here? I'm above the asymptote. But if I have negative half to the power of x, now the negative is doing what? The negative is saying, hey, you're at the bottom of the asymptote. The half says, okay, I'm on the left hand side. So I know I'm on the left, but I'm at the bottom. Can you see? So I'm going like this, and then I'm going like that. So what do we have here? We have 2 to the power x, a half to the power x. Both of them positive, so they both on top. I got negative 2 to the power x, negative a half to the power of x. Both of them negative, so they're at the bottom of the asymptote. And then on my right hand side, they are whole numbers. They are greater than 1, so they are on my right hand side. These ones are less than 1 between 0 and 1, so they are on my left hand side. Now, what I would think is fairly important is that you need to understand this graph. Okay? When I say understand it, you must be able to say positives are on top. You must be able to say which range they are running. Negatives are at the bottom. You must be able to say which range they are running. Now let us draw a graph. Y is equal to 3 to the power of X plus 2. Now you know the Q is your asymptote. So my equation for my asymptote is Y is equal to 2. So what we're going to do is at 2, we're going to put in our asymptote. Right, now, what we would do is, when you're doing this, with exponential graphs, you need to decide, okay, I'm a positive, so I know I'm on the top, so I know I'm going to be within this area. All right, then I know that I'm a whole number, which means I'm going to start around there. So in your head, you should know that, listen, I'm going to go something like that you're clearly not going to cross the asymptote. Now, if you're not going to cross the asymptote, that means you're not going to cross this line. And if you're not going to cross this line, you don't need to do x-intercept. Now, if you do in x-intercept, you're going to see it doesn't work out, it doesn't calculate. It's nice to know your knowledge before. It's no use doing x-intercept, and then it doesn't even work out, and you're wasting your time. So from the drawing, you can see, listen, I'm not going to cross my x-intercept. So you don't need to do x-intercept. But you are going to cross your y-intercept. x is equal to 0. Now remember, you have to check. Sometimes it cuts both x-intercept and y-intercept. Sometimes it only cuts the y-intercept. So you need to check your graphs, okay? Now we're doing y-intercept, x is 0. So I'm going to have y is equal to 3 to the power 0 plus 2. Now what's 3 to the power 0? It's 1. So I have 1 plus 2 means y is equal to 3. Okay, now look at the graph. It doesn't give you enough information. This, I could draw this way. I could draw this way. Now why do we have that table? You need to decide now. A, there's my dot, but do I start on my right hand side or do I start on my left hand side? If you look at your table, I am a positive so I know I'm on top. I am greater than 1. I am 3. So, if your graph is 3, if your graph is 3, it means you start here. And that is your graph. And this graph is f of x is equal to 3 to the power x plus 2. Okay, we're going to draw the graph that says f of x is equal to 3 to the power of minus x minus 3. Asymptotes are easy. I know my asymptote is going to be y is equal to minus 3. So we've got y is equal to minus 3. This is my asymptote. Now it is a positive version. Can you see? That means positive, which means I'm going to draw anyway here on top because that's what positive means. 
it means on top okay but this is trouble okay when you have a negative power then we are screaming out trouble so we know 3 to the power of negative x minus 3 if I wanted it to be a positive exponent I'm going to have 3 to the power of minus 1 which is 1 over 3 x minus 3 so we have f of x is equal to 1 over 3 to the power of x minus 3 that tells me that listen you now have a value that is between 0 and 1 which means that I am starting or I am going to draw on my left hand side can you see so we have on our left hand side and then we have on top so where are we drawing we are definitely going to draw in this area now if we draw in this area if you use your imagination you can see the chances are you could cut both x intercept and y intercept so you have to do x intercept and y intercept so we're going to start with x intercept y is equal to 0 so we have 0 is equal to 1 over 3 to the power of x minus 3 take my 3 over so I have 3 is equal to 1 over 3 to the power of x now how do I solve this 3 to the power 1 if I wanted it to be a third it will be so we have 1 over 3 to the power negative 1 that's how I make it a negative version go over your exponent rules if you are not okay with this work so if I'm solving x is equal to negative 1 that says what you've calculated that is my coordinates x intercept my coordinate is going to be minus 1 and 0 but that is my x intercept minus 1 and 0 minus 1 and 0 now how do we do the y intercept y intercept means x is equal to 0 so I'm going to have f of x is equal to 3 minus 0 minus 3 so my power is minus 0 which is the same as 0 so 3 to the power 0 is 1 minus 3 gives me so my y is equal to minus 2 so where's my coordinate it's on minus 2 so my coordinate is 0 and minus 2 now if I'm drawing the graph remember it's a third so I'm starting from the side and I'm gonna go like that so you are starting from the left hand side and you're going to go through so basically you're going to go through starting from the left hand side so let us go over what we would do we would always try and make the exponent a positive the positive in front tells me if I'm on top or at the bottom of the asymptote then the number decides if I'm starting on the left or the right hand side thank you for watching